And uh, we want to welcome you to the uh, Longview City Council meeting of March 13th, 2014. Um, today we're glad to have uh, the prayer to be led by Israel Adams of Pine Tree High School. And then the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Jared Dixon of Longview High School. Would you please stand? <clears throat> Let us pray. Lord, our God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for another opportunity to be here to discuss the situations in our community. Lord, we know that without you, everything that we do and every action that we take, it will be void of life. We know, God, that without you, we will, be, we will have no meaning. Lord, every action and every, and every situation, God, today, Lord God, let your influence be in it, Lord. Not our will, but yours will be done. Lord, the task that is set before before us today, let us achieve it, and let us go b above and beyond what we thought we would. Not what we want to do, Lord God, but let us go to your level. We ask for guidance and support today. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, guys. That's two, two nice-looking young men. We appreciate y'all being here tonight. Thank y'all. Looking good. Thanks. Good afternoon, Mr. Allen. Glad you could make it. Glad you could make it. Timing is everything. All right, uh, we're gonna start today's meeting uh, with our citizen comment. I've got a couple of cards. Uh, see, we got Mr. Vic Burma back tonight. Where you at, Vic? There you are, okay. Thank you, Mayor Dean, members of council. Um, I'm here tonight. Um, I'm here on behalf of Organizing for Action and Special Health Resources of Texas and the NAACP Longview chapter. Um, as we all know, the March 31st is the end of the open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act. Um, so we're urging folks to get enrolled if they haven't already done so. I myself have gotten enrolled, have a very nice gold plan that is very much suiting my needs and very much makes me happy. So I'm encouraging, we're encouraging everybody to do that. Um, I'm also on the board of Special Health Resources of Texas. Um, we have a navigator grant for 14 East Texas counties, the counties represented by the East Texas Council of Governments. Um, our navigators are hard, are hard at work getting people enrolled and we encourage people who need assistance um, to contact one of our navigators. You can contact our, our phone number at 903-247-1078. Um, you can go by the Community Connections Building. That's where our office is. Just stop by. Um, you can make, a, it's probably better if you make an appointment, So you, but if you stop by, they'll be able to help you as well. Um, so. We are encouraging people to get enrolled. There are four ways. You can do it with our navigators. You can do it online at healthcare.gov. You can do it by phone or mail. But the best ways to do it are with a navigator or online. Um, so we're, we also are still doing um, information sessions. We've spoken to many churches and community groups to make sure that people are getting the truth and the wor word about what's in the Affordable Care Act and how it can help them. So that's what we're doing with Special Health. And one of those places that we will be is this weekend at the NAACP and Special Health Resources Health Fair. NAACP Longview Chapter and Special Health Resources of Texas are pleased to be co-sponsoring a health fair at Bethel Baptist Church at 323 Court Street from 9 a.m. in the morning to 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Special Health will be there to have enroll people and give out information. I myself will be giving a presentation um, and we will have many other health services. We'll have the, the, the mobile unit and um, other, other organizations um, trying to make sure we have a healthier community. So we encourage the community to turn out for that. So again, we just hope that people get enrolled. Um, it's, it's, it's good for families, it's good for individuals, it's good for our community. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Verma. I thought you were going to tell me you were going to be there yourself cooking hamburgers, hot dogs, and all that stuff. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is our chair for the event, so. Mr. Crane? All yeah. right, man. Thank you. Good info. All right, Victoria Wilson. 
Good evening, Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. How are you? Good. I'm glad to be here. I think I put in front of you all, and appreciate all that you do, a uh, Celebrate Authors. This is on behalf of the library. I was asked to help um, make this event happen, and it's been an honor and a privilege to work with um, um, city staff, our librarians. Um, this is, we're calling it Celebrate Authors, Telling Your Story. It's from April the <clears throat> 3rd through the fifth, and we are having nationally acclaimed authors in here. This is a really exciting time for Longview Yehuda Mercado, and he has uh, done some work with Disney, written some books, Pantalones, Texas, uh, and does illustrations. And so he's going to be doing some things with the kids. Kathy Lucchetti is a friend of mine that I grew up with in Midland, Texas. We're honored to have her. She wrote the books, uh, Medicine Women of the West, Children of the West, uh, Ministers of the West, and the book I Do. And the Medicine Women of the West book was what they took Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, after. So we're thrilled to have her to be here. And she is celebrating her new book called Skid Boot, The Smartest Dog in the World. And uh, the news will be sort of given out in Longview that Sony's just brought the rights from the screenplay for that. So we'll get to celebrate that with her. There are going to be a number of authors here, lots of events, tents. Uh, and I put a schedule of events for you right here. So they'll, Dr. Peggy Coughlin will be the honorary chairman. We certainly hope that you all will be able to make it and at least be there for that opening uh, on that Thursday evening. Uh, for the meet and greet for the authors. So I just wanted to get this out into the public because, uh, as you all know, I'm a big supporter of our library, and we have a wonderful staff there, and they, they've, they've been very creative in wanting to pull this together and um, make this a, 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 a happening event for Longview. And there are a number of ways. I didn't know what this is, but I was informed by city staff that this is a QR co co code. QR code. They even loaded it on my phone for me. I was appreciative. So this is a way people can snap on this. Look, Richard knows what it is, right? Well, it is century, Thank you. Isn't it great? <laughs> I know. Hanging on to the path. Yeah. And anyway, you can snap it and get reservations. And the lim the seating is limited. Uh, uh, but the great thing about it is it's on the Facebook side. There's a telephone number for those of us that still like to have a personal voice at the end of the line and we and this is the first event we hope to make it an annual we're already having authors from other areas inquire about next year and the great thing is we have people already coming in um, from I know friends of Kathy's amount are coming in from out of state they're coming in from out of the city so people are going to be having you know using hotel rooms restaurants are going to be filled up it's going to be a really great addition to the city on a lot of levels so thank you for your time and thank welcome you to all of here. Here. okay yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's all the speaker cards I have except for P and Z items. So we'll move to consent agenda. Council, is any item on consent agenda you'd like to uh, hear separately? I just got a question on okay. item D. Okay, Ms. Uh, Ms. Smith has a question on item D. D. Item D, and let's see who's. Uh, oh. That would be Ms. Angela Cohen. Oh, she's also. Hi, hi, Angela. How hi. you doing? Angela, who is the prudent uh, city investment policy person? Who is the pr uh, prudent person for our investment policy? Who is the current person? The prudent person for our well, current person. That would by. be me. That would be you. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. That's what I want. I just didn't ever know, Mr. Okay, Mayor. Okay, and then we have also have a an auditor. Okay. Um, not in one of the investments. Okay, as far as investment. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Any other questions or items for separate consideration? If not, may I have a motion or consent agenda? Move to approve. Second. Have a motion, a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. <laughs> Next time will be our zoning and public hearing items. Uh, item A would be a, uh, to hear a public hearing to consider application HL 14-01, Mr. Shirley. Thank you, Mayor Dean, members of council, Mr. Willard. Uh, the, this application is to request a local historic landmark designation uh, for the TMP Mopac train depot located at 905 Pacific Avenue. Uh, as you may be aware, this is a, a project that the city 
uh, is in the process of renovating. We're going to unveil the uh, in May at train day. Um, also, city staff uh, submitted to the state for a registered Texas Historic Landmark and RTHL designation, which was approved. They're in the process of going through that a very lengthy process. Uh, and, and with that, we wanted to designate it as a local landmark also. This is our first uh, local landmark application. Um, and, um, you know, as you know, rail has been a very important part of Longview's history, part of our uh, establishment. And so, um, you know, this, this location is, is near and dear to a lot of our hearts. Um, you know, as, as the criteria for designation, um, being a recorded Texas historic landmark is one of those, uh, but also due to its historical, economic, architectural, and cultural significance, uh, it meets those uh, standards also. So um, the Historic Preservation Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, and staff do recommend approval uh, of the first designation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions, Council? If not, this item requires a public hearing. The public hearing is now open, and I do have one speaker card from Gerald Bate. We're here to answer questions, so did you want to speak to this item, Mr. Bate? Like Pardon me? Please come forward. Gerald, huh? Bats, okay. Good evening. My name is Gerald Bratz. I'm currently serving as chairman of the Historic Preservation Commission, along with commission members Van Craddock, Pam Johnson, Lori Keyball, and the city liaison, uh, John Sims. Our mission statement charges the commission to protect, enhance, and perpetuate historic landmarks and districts of importance as a mechanism to advance the economic, cultural, educational, and general welfare of the city of Longview. The Commission has initially identified a list of local historic landmarks owned by governmental entities, institutions, organizations, churches, and private owners that are eligible for historic designation, along with possible state and national recognition. Two of the Commission's four goals that apply to the Longview Train Depot's historic landmark designation are to increase public interest and civic pride in Longview's history as well as to protect the landmarks and districts of Longview's historic, architectural, and cultural heritage. Therefore, the Historic Preservation Commission recommends the City Council to approve the circa 1939 Texas and Pacific, Reserve Pacific passenger station as the first of the city's historic designated landmarks. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir, for being here. Um, I do not have any other speaker cards. Anyone here would like to speak to this item as well? If not, public hearing is closed. Council may have a motion. Move. Have a motion. Second. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Uh, we'll go to item B, public hearing to consider application Z1402. Thank you, Mayor Dean. Uh, this is a request uh, to rezone from multifamily MF3 to single family SF5 uh, for uh, lots located, uh, lots 15 through 18, block 7 of the Marshall Heights subdivision located on the northeast corner of North 3rd Street and Adams Street. Uh, as you can tell from the zoning map, these lots are currently zoned multifamily. Uh, they are requesting to rezone, downzone this so that they can build single family houses. Uh, they could build it under the current zoning, but by downzoning it, it protects that investment. This is uh, part of the uh, redevelopment of this area it is consistent with the uh, zoning across the street uh, it is in a future land use area for low intensity business but we don't see this area redeveloping outside of the residential so it is still consistent with the land use that's occurring there um, planning and zoning commission uh, did recommend approval as well as staff i'd be happy to answer any questions questions of mr shirley if not, this item requires a public hearing. The public hearing is now open. I do have a speaker card for Mike Alston. Mike? I'll get your address. Okay. All right, any questions of Mr. Alston? Is there anyone else here that would like to speak to this matter? If not, the public hearing is closed. May I have a motion? Shall move. Have a motion. Second, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Item C, public hearing to hear uh, application Z1403. 
Thank you, Mayor Dean. Uh, this request is to rezone from agriculture to single family four uh, for an approximate uh, half acre uh, in the William Robinson Survey Track 2 located on the south side of Darney, uh, which is west of Stanilin Street. Uh, here's a survey of that property. There's an existing uh, kind of six bay metal garage on that property. Um, as you may know, when we uh, bring property into the city, when we annex it, we are, give it a zoning designation of agriculture until more permanent zoning can be established. Uh, that's why most of this area surrounding is zoned ag. There are some areas that are zoned single family. Uh, as we go to develop property, we assign it a zoning category that is appropriate for the land use. Um, this area is designated as a low density residential and single family four is very consistent with that. Looking at the uh, aerial map, there are a few houses located on the north side of Darney. It is a, a dead end street. Um, what, what's generating the reason request for this property? Uh, the gentleman uh, purchased it, I believe, uh, at, with a meets and bounds description, not subject to a compliant uh, subdivision plat. So it was illegally subdivided. It was uh, owned by a gentleman that owned the majority of this property in the past. Um, and so they're just trying to rezone it uh, so that they can utilize this property to, to potentially build a single family home or subdivide it in the future and build additional single family homes. Um, I know at the PNZ meeting, several of the adjacent property owners had concerns with, uh, with the street. It's a uh, private street, privately maintained, does have some issues with it. Um, there's issues with you know water and fire protection there, and all of those uh, items will have to be addressed. The zoning is just the first step in the process. It does would allow them to build just a single family home, but they will still have to address fire protection uh, and all of those access issues. Um, you know we'll have to see what the fire marshal is going to ask for as far as you know the surface turnarounds, fire protection with fire hydrants. I know there is a two inch water line out there. I don't know if it's gonna be sufficient for a, an additional water tap or not, but all those items will have to be addressed during the development process. Okay, um, questions of Mr. Shirley. Okay, Mr. Allen. Michael, thank you. On the street, since it's a private street, uh, do they have plans to dedicate it to the city or do you know? No, because they only have the right to cross it. They don't actually own it. Um, you know, as far as the ownership of it, I don't know that just one person actually owns it, okay. um, but it is privately maintained. All right. Uh, what would we do uh, if this is approved as far as you mentioned a uh, uh, fire service in order to, uh, would the road have to be resurfaced or would there be any requirements on that uh, as far as the fire department's concerned? Potentially, I, I can't answer for the fire marshal. Um, you know, the fire code does have several requirements when it comes to new construction and they would have to address that and satisfy our codes. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Frost. Okay. With respect to the fire and the fire hydrants uh, and the size of the uh, pipes, uh, would the person have to put in a fire hydrant in accordance with the uh, subdivision ordinance? Yes, with a, well, if they just build a single one, it would be per the fire code because they wouldn't be subdividing. Um, but it, you know, that, is one way to address it. And, you know, I'm not the fire marshal, so I don't want to speak on his behalf, but generally fire hydrants are required within 600 feet. There are uh, other alternatives in some situations, but yeah. they will have to address fire protection satisfactorily. Including Inclu sprinkler system. Potentially, yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, the there's entire, lots of, yeah. I mean, thing, yeah. The, the entire thing, because what it boils down to is pressure and flow. Pressure mm -hmm. and flow. Yeah. So, I mean, they will have to address it. So right. They have to be addressed. Okay, right. okay. Ms. Williams. Um, <clears throat> Councilman Allen asked the question about are they dedicating this to the city and I think the answer was no. No. So in regard to fire, water and the services we provide, if we're allowing for this rezoning, are we potentially assuming some form of financial responsibility? Is that what I'm hearing? No. No. This is it just will still rest with them as the private street owners? Correct. Okay. We're not assuming any responsibility on the street. The, the property owners have the current right to cross it and use it as a private access easement. This is strictly just zoning it for the use of, of his property. It's not rezoning anybody else's property either. Um, and now if he, you know, chooses to build and we have to you know, dedicate water lines, sewer lines, fire protection. They'll have to 
if we don't have easements, and I think we, we may have some easements out there because there are some water and sewer lines out there, but he may have to obtain other easements uh, in order to satisfy that. And in obtaining those easements, he will have to incur, incur that cost. Correct. This Correct? is part of the development. Our uh, job cost. is just to make sure the procedure is Correct. followed. Yes, in this. And and uh, one last thing, uh, are you referencing one home or are we talking about a potential development? Uh, potential development um, with it being half acre in the single family four zoning. Um, and I don't remember the, the width of the property. <laughs> Let me go back, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there's the potential for maybe three with okay. a single family four zoning. There, there are minimum width, minimum depth, and minimum uh, square footage requirements. So right. looking at it, I would think three tops. I don't, okay. you know, and I'll let the, the, the gentleman address what his, you know, what his intentions are. Okay, thank you. Okay, <coughs> quick, Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Shirley, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, in the parcels in that area set up for one acre lots? Or is the developer just taking a half acre and you know subdividing it into a quarter of an acre each? Yes, you know, under, the, under the current ag zoning, it does require a minimum one acre uh, to, to legally subdivide, and that's kind of the issue. Uh, it was illegally subdivided. We're trying to rezone it to make it legal. Currently, it's non-conforming. And you know, um, as we see development, Generally, we rezone to allow a little more density, but less than the one acre. What about the other property in that area? Are those one acre lots? Uh, I, I don't believe so. The one across the street is 0.38. Um, okay. The other ones appear to be half acre, or, you know, maybe a little bit larger. About I believe most of them are non-conforming, but they're existing. They have existing homes on them. I, I believe they were like that when we annexed them. So their existing non-conforming or essentially grandfathered. Thank you, Mr. Shirley. So we're annexing mayor. somebody illegally, illegally causing them property. <laughs> so this, this is currently planted. Is a point five zero? I mean, no, good. it's not currently planted. In order for them to build on it, they will have to legally plat it, either as the one lot or as more than one lot, whatever they choose. Um, but but. Currently, it's an illegal, illegally subdivided parcel. Okay. And you rezoning is the first step to plat it legally. Do you know where the closest uh, city water line, feeder line would be? There is a water line on Darney. It's a, I believe it's a two inch. Oh, it's small. Um, I believe there's maybe a six inch on Stanlin, if not on Tenryville. Okay. Um, but they, you know, they'll have to, they'll have to address that when they, you know, and this is the first step. Okay. Anything else? All right. This item calls for a public hearing, and I have a card from Rodney Riley. Did you want to speak, Mr. Riley? Yes. Sir. Come on. Thank you. Uh, I'm only here because I, I bought the property illegally subdivided. I didn't you have bought it illegally. I bought it, <laughs> and I bought it, and I it was illegally <laughs> subdivided. <laughs> and upon purchase of it, I didn't know that. And uh, I bought it for a storage building because there is a 20 by 60 right. building on there, and I was just going to store materials in there. Well, I uh, found out from Michael I'm not supposed to have that. I'm not supposed to be using it. Uh, so. This is the first step I'm trying to take so I can be legal in what I do there, whether I tear the building down and build one house or three. My intention is just to, just to get the process started to see if I can do anything with it at all. Well, it's in an area that could sure use some. Yes, sir. You know, some great. Uh, any questions, Mr. Riley? I just want to make a statement. Yeah, go ahead. I know Coach Riley, he builds good quality homes. That'd That's be a nice exactly addition right. to that area if he were to, in fact, develop it. So I think it'd be a good thing for the city and for that yeah. area, Rodney. I agree 100%. He's done a great job, I think. I'm just giving you a hard time. That's okay. I think he coached my daughters. I got to give him a hard time. <laughs> a little bit. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't coach cheerleaders, did you? I mean, no, I didn't do cheerleaders. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> you were coaching because of my son, I think. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any, uh, I don't have any other speaker cards. Anybody else like to speak to this item? If not, public hearing is closed. Council can have a motion. I'll move to approve. Okay, I have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Action items. Item A, consider resolution to publish and post the draft fiscal year 2014 annual housing plan. We have Mr. Martel Armstrong, uh -oh. who I want to personally thank for taking my place today since I was <laughs> unable to attend the leadership Longview meeting today. I know you did a wonderful job. 
<laughs> I did the best I could. <laughs> <laughs> On such short notice. <laughs> Indeed. So, uh, Mayor Jean, uh, Mr. Willard, ladies and gentlemen of uh, Council, uh, these are our um, annual routine activities that are uh, required from us by HUD. Uh, you read the caption. Um, we are just um, posting and publishing our annual plan, five-year plan, and changes to our budgets for uh, community development block grant and home gr uh, funds. Okay, questions of Mr. Armstrong? Okay, uh, if not, may I have a motion? No motion. Have a motion. Second. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Uh, and then we have item B, is to consider re resolution to publish and post the draft of the amended consolidated action plan and home budget for the city of Longview. Mr. Armstrong. Again, these are um, routine annual activities Procedure. that are required by HUD. So um, we're asking to uh, publish and post the draft of the submit. I don't have to read it after you read it, but yeah. Okay. 2013. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so procedural. Okay. Questions, comments on this item? If not, may I have a motion? So moved. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Martell, thank you very much. Buddy. Thank you. Okay. Item C, consider an ordinance approving the city manager's recommendations regarding the appointments as posted. There he is. Mr. Willard. Thank you, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Since I've been the city manager, which uh, in June will be nearly will be seven years. So uh, since that time, we've been operating the uh, executive team staff uh, for the city of Longview, according to this organizational chart that you'll see before you tonight. Uh, and that's included, of course, an assistant city manager position. Uh, we have two uh, public safety chiefs, fire chief and police chief, director of finance, public works director, also development services director, uh, community services director, and human resources directorship. And as I say, we've been operating uh, like this for uh, the whole time uh, that I have been here. As you know, the assistant city manager position and the human resources director position became vacant. And so. About last fall, I began the process to, uh, to look for candidates to fill these positions. And we even contracted uh, with a search firm that specializes in uh, recruiting municipal employees and went through the process first with the uh, HR director position and then we would continue on after that with the city manager uh, search after that. We uh, did go through the process and uh, went out uh, and got uh, recruitment for uh, human resources director. We had uh, quite a few candidates that responded to that and even went uh, so far as to bring in two people for an interview. Uh, we had a, an interview panel that helped me on that and went through that process. After that, uh, obviously it was time to look at, at issuing a job offer based on those interviews and at the time, uh, I felt like it was uh, just not the right fit for the city and the organization at that particular time. We had qualified candidates, but uh, just really uh, was not comfortable going forward. And so at that time, I, I thought we've got two vacancies here and needed to step back and look at the organization, think about it, and see uh, what was the best opportunity that we could have to fill these positions uh, in a major way and do some major restructuring in the executive team uh, staff. So at that point, I spent uh, about three weeks going around and visiting with each department director, both the fire chief and the police chief, and we had personal meetings with each one of those staffs. And I can tell you that that's probably been one of the most productive things that I've done since I've been your city manager is to to have that kind of conversation uh, with the, the people that we have on staff in those levels. And uh, I wanted to talk to them about and get their views on the organization, where we had been, where we were trying to go, uh, some of their aspirations personally and professionally, what they uh, felt like they wanted to pursue in their careers. And so uh, after that, I, th I, I thought we have a great opportunity to not only fill these positions, but to fill these positions with people we currently have on staff and fill them, not just to fill them, but to really have people in place and to manage according to what I would consider their strengths uh, as managers. And so uh, tonight uh, I am proposing uh, three appointments uh, for you to consider tonight. 
Uh, the first one would be the assistant city manager position, and I'm uh, pleased to uh, put forth the name of Keith Bonds uh, to you to be appointed as the assistant city manager. Uh, Keith uh, has been, and also, let me, excuse me, let me go back. The other two uh, tonight will be uh, Roland McPhee for public works director and also director of administration, Mary Ann Miller. Okay. Keith Bonds. Is that uh, a selfie? Do you like that picture? That looks like a selfie, man. <laughs> we, have a low we have a low budget on photography. Yeah, I see that. Well, the one, yeah, that, okay, go ahead. Let's, let's okay. leave that up there. Everyone too, knows though. Keith Bonds, but uh, Keith uh, has a, a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Texas A&M. He's a registered professional engineer in the state of Texas. And, 25 years or so of municipal experience. He's been with the city of Longview since 1999. He came in as a civil engineer. He's been the interim water planning development director, and then in 2000 was named the director of water utilities. And then in 2002, I believe those were combined all under public works. And so, uh, Keith, uh, since I've been here, and I, I, I tell everyone that I talk to about Keith, that he is one of the most capable directors that I've ever worked with in my municipal career. He, uh, his strong suit, in my opinion, is operations. Obviously, being an engineer, he's, he's familiar with processes and how you get from point A to point B in construction projects and, and other projects that he's been involved in. But to me, the thing I think that sets Keith apart is that he also has the ability to communicate how he wants people and manages people to get from point A to point B, which I think uh, is a very important quality uh, for a, an assistant city manager at that level. He has been uh, over, uh, he would be over development services, he'd be over community services, and he'd also obviously be over public works. And I think this is the beauty of this organizational plan because these three departments that be reporting uh, to Keith are heavy in operations. All those departments, uh, whether it be, uh, um, you know, in the, obviously in the public works, but in the parks department and also in development services are, are departments that have a lot of processes and then they have a lot of, of uh, organizational and type uh, aspects that, that I think really plays to Keith's strong suit. Keith has the, uh, the respect of all city employees. He uh, has the respect of the community as well known in the community. And the thing that, uh, that I think is the most important thing for an assistant city manager is that you have someone in there that city council, the community, uh, and obviously the city manager has the confidence in and the capabilities to step right in uh, if need be to be the city manager, if, if the city manager's incapacitated or whatever, then you've got a man in Keith Bonds that could step right in and the city would never miss a beat. So I'm proud tonight, uh, you know, to present Keith's name to you for the assistant city manager job. The next uh, person that I'd like to recommend is Rollin McPhee to be the director of public works. Now Rollin uh, uh, has been here also since 2000, uh, so 14 years. He came to us, I think, from Marshall uh, is that right, Rollin? And he was the Public Works Engineering Director uh, for the City of Marshall. And uh, since 2009, he was promoted uh, to the Assistant Director of Public Works position and has been in there. Rollin uh, is very capable as well. Now, Rollin may not be as visible uh, to a lot of people, uh, but I can tell you all the bond projects that the council and the voters have put forward all the construction projects that, that we've been doing over the years in both public works and water and sewer department has Roland McPhee's handprints all over it. He's very good um, at managing construction projects and all of you, I think, understand that I don't know of any projects really the city's had that have been over budget or uh, not on time. And, that has a great deal to do with Rollins' capabilities and how he manages uh, those type of projects. He's very capable uh, to step right in uh, into Keith's seat as the Director of Public Works. And of course, uh, in that, uh, is a, those are big departments and a big job, and, and also we'll have Keith there as well 
uh, to help out when he needs to in the oversight of those departments. Uh, these are, are the departments or the divisions that Rollin will be responsible for, water supply, collection distribution, traffic engineering, sanitation and fleet, wastewater, streets and drainage, and then uh, plant automation. So uh, Rollin will, uh, I have every confidence, and Keith and I have visited about it, and Keith has every confidence in Rollin's capabilities as well, and uh, I think it'll be a, a perfect fit for him. Next, I'd like to recommend uh, Mary Ann Miller to be Why the director. Why picture so much better than the other two? <laughs> You'll have to ask her that. <laughs> you think? <laughs> better looking than we are. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. <laughs> Mary Ann Miller uh, is, has a Bachelor of Administration degree in Broadcast Journalism from Union University in Tennessee, and she currently is completing her coursework in her Master's of Public Administration from UT Tyler. She came to the city in 2001, 13 years ago, as a library tech, and then uh, spent two years in the Human Resources Department as Administrative Secretary. And then in 2003, Mr. Finley hired her to uh, move into the city attorney's office. And then in 2008, uh, moved down the hall and uh, became the city manager office office manager. And then since 2009, she's been uh, in the city manager's office as the assistant to the city manager. Uh, I can say, having worked with Mary Ann, really since, uh, because we work so closely with the city attorney's office, really since I came here in, in uh, 07, uh, but then in 09, we've worked together pretty much every day on projects uh, since 09. Her strong suits are administration and organization. I've never been around anybody that understands how to organize things and prioritize things to accomplish a goal. She can take uh, issues and projects, research those, and has the, the ability to have goals and to be organized enough to meet those where you can get from point A to point B and to find solutions for whatever issue that, that we're looking at. She's uh, had a lot of experience, of course, in the city attorney's office and uh, experience with policy, with uh, ordinances, with personnel policies, with administrative regulations, and those type of things which have been very important uh, in the Office of Administration. And uh, one change, of course, this would eliminate a director of human resources and be replaced with the director of administration. And of course, she would be responsible for other things just than human resources and risk. She'd also be responsible for information services, uh, all of our IT functions. Uh, she'd be responsible for municipal court operations uh, and also uh, for the internal auditor as well. Okay. Uh, now I'd like, uh, those are the three names that I have before you, but I'd like to take just a minute to complete uh, the plan that, that uh, I would like to, to go ahead and pursue. As I said, uh, we're going to have a director of administration, hopefully would be the plan, and would like to have the HR and risk func functions under a manager instead of a director level. So the manager would, of risk and HR would report to the director of administration. And I'd like to put forth uh, Terry Fields uh, for that position would be my intentions. Uh, Terry currently is the risk manager who oversees uh, all of our risk and insurance and health clinics. She's been with the city since 2001, and I'd like to combine uh, the other, the HR side under the management of Terry Fields. Uh, Terry, uh, I want to uh, brag on her because she, the employee health clinic that we have and operate, is one of the most successful things we've done since I've been here as city manager. And you're all familiar with the employee health clinic and the benefit and the services that provides to our employees. And we are seeing definite signs of cost savings as we go forward because of that. And Terry Fields was the architect uh, that brought that program forward back, I think in, I don't know, 08, somewhere in there, uh, to go forward. And she has done a wonderful job doing that. And I expect uh, she'll do exactly the same uh, over on the HR side as well, okay? And then, uh, of course, this would be the organization chart, uh, assuming all that works out. Uh, uh, Terry would be the manager of risk. She'd also have HR risk 
employee health clinic uh, and payroll. And last but certainly not least, uh, I would uh, propose to promote Sean Hara uh, to the vacancy created uh, to the assistant to the city manager. And uh, everyone knows Sean, I, you know, I'll probably embarrass him, but I don't know anybody that does not like Sean Hara. <laughs> Uh, just been all over the city and does a wonderful job as our PIO officer and all the volunteer boards and all the things he's coordinated over the years. Uh, Sean has, look at this, two bachelor's degrees from Laterno University, one in business administration, one in political science, and then a master's of public administration from UT Tyler. Uh, he's been with the city since 2003 and uh, has, of course, since 2012 been our PIO officer. I would propose for him to continue being the PIO officer. I think that makes perfect sense with his duties. Uh, and he would be responsible for the overall media development. That's the Channel 5, the, the website, and all the social media that we do. And then also help coordinate the city manager's office staff. Um, Sean and Marianne both have done excellent jobs uh, helping out behind the scenes on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. I know Mr. Manley's been involved in many meetings with them and the mayor on that committee uh, and the support they've given on that as we go forward. They, they've done a wonderful job trying to get all that uh, done and, and, uh, and going forward. So both of them would continue to do projects like that uh, uh, to help out. So uh, to summarize this, I think this organizes our structure according to primary areas of administration and operations. Uh, it allows long-time qualified employees to promote. It positions these employees according to their managerial strengths. It doesn't just fill positions, but it, it has a purpose according to what I would believe would be their strengths. We do this with less one executive level position. We would propose not to fill Rollins' position as an assistant director. And uh, these and other savings, we're going to be able to do this and show a savings to our budget of around $126,000. So tonight I'd ask you to, uh, to approve these three positions, Keith Bonds for Assistant City Manager, Roland McPhee for Director of Public Works, and Mary Ann Miller as Director of Administration. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, let me, uh, let me ask you this, um, as far as the questions and everything else, are you more comfortable down there? You want to come back to your it, place? Wherever you want me, Mayor. You come on and come back to your place, I would think. Let me uh, make a couple comments while David's returning. Um, you know, this, like Council knows, has been going, on, uh, this has been ongoing now for quite some time. Um, this was not the original structure uh, after, um, you know, a lot of work by Mr. Willard and, you know, trying to really make, make the thing work the right way. Um, this is the outcome. Uh, there, there's a number of things to this, but, but one thing I want to mention to council is that uh, a number of years ago when Ricky Childers was our city manager, there was a motion, there was an item on an agenda once to take away uh, where council has to approve directors. If you check most cities, the, the uh, director positions are appointed by the city manager. I mean, it's kind of like coaching when a, you, know, you, you replace the coach. Typically, the coach's uh, assistants don't really stay with the team or he, he has that opportunity to evaluate whether they, they fit his team or don't. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's, it's unusual, okay, that, that we have that situation, but that's, that's uh, you know, something that we've done for quite some time, and, and uh, so I, I want to point that out. Um, we, we are a little bit different in that the city manager comes to counts when it comes to directors. Uh, personally, I think any time, in, like in, in business, that you're able to promote within, if you have employees that have earned the opportunity to move ahead, move forward, to grow in their job and, and to help your company, I think it makes sense. And I think it makes sense in this case that the individuals that are being uh, promoted, you know, it does make good sense. Um, I, I think, you know, these are long-term employees. Um, what, what are they looking forward to, you know, down the road? What is every employee looking forward to down the road? And hopefully it's to grow. Um, the city has to have a team behind it 
you know, to do great things. And, and we, we need to foster that type of attitude within the ranks of our city employees that you know, don't think that you're going to be in that same position your whole career uh, and, and step forward and show some prominence, step forward and show some, uh, you know, some acumen to, to move up the ladder, okay? And, and, and it's important. Um, the fact that there's a, a considerable uh, savings to our budget, uh, on top of with, in the case of Mr. Bonds, um, where there's maybe some streamlining of the processes. We know there's processes in this city that have been there for quite some time. And it's time to review those very closely and, and make sure that we're executing in a high efficiency way to make sure that that the services we're providing to the citizens of Longview are, are absolutely where they need to be and even better. So that, that excites me that there's the potential to streamline processes and put new things into place. So um, I'm gonna open it up for questions. Uh, did anybody have anything? Okay, we'll start on, on number six. Okay, all right. Since you were late. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. I'm kidding oh. with you. No. Oh. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, first of all, Mr. Willard, I want to say thank you. It's really an, an excellent organization, an excellent opportunity that you that you have people within the city of Longview organization that you can promote. I know you interviewed uh, other people for these jobs, and uh, it's just it's just excellent that you can find uh, people within the organization to uh, fill these positions. I think my, I'm gonna make two points. One is the uh, boost to morale and the personal performance in the city staff. It's, it's just always easier when you can work with somebody that you've known, that, that you know what they do. And, and that's just, uh, that's, a, that's a good way to do it. On a little lighter side, uh, I was talking to Rollin McPhee the other day, and he told me next time he gets a haircut, he's going to make me a toupee, <laughs> so I might look like Mr. Manley. He's getting everybody on this. Bar is toupee. Bar is. Well, he won't let me have it. <laughs> are, are you done? God. Yes. God. <laughs> I'll come over this side. Okay. Then we'll. I don't know how to follow that. Yeah. Um, That's why I was going to try to see if Mr. Yeah, right. Sims wanted come to try compose myself. No. Uh, well, first thing, I just want to point out once again, there's way too many Aggies in our leadership at the city. Uh. <laughs> Um, they are in the SEC conference. That's though. right. I know. I, I had to write my kids back into the will after they went to A&M <laughs> and came back in the conference. Got a lot of confidence in all you, all you folks who are getting promoted. Congratulations. Um, you've worked hard, and uh, you exemplify the kind of um, character and professionalism that we want to have at our city as you not only work with our citizens, but as you travel around the state and interact with other folks. So real proud of all of you, and um, I am... Um, <clears throat> Being as the uh, liaison to development services, I've spent some time with Mr. Bonds and asked him to put uh, some extra effort into that area as I continue to hear comments from some of my fellow citizens about how we could make, uh, improve that department. And I know you share my passion for that, and I'll do everything I can to help you, um, not only with that department, but anything else you're doing. So congratulations to everyone. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Finley. Okay, Ms. Williams, <coughs> then I'll come back to you. Um, while I appreciate the effort. Um, we've been talking about this for some time. I have to acknowledge publicly that I'm a little disappointed in the way the process has played out in this case. Um, I realize that the city manager has the right to appoint a team, but at the same time I also realize that we are a public entity and not a private corporation. We're an entity that functions off of public taxpayer dollars and I think that we are, we should be cautious in governing ourselves as such. Um, I was expecting a, a larger and more diverse, and I will leave you to your definitions of diversity, um, restructuring process. I do believe in growing your own and creating your own, but we cannot afford to be selective in that process. I was very excited at the thought of when we did not hire from within an HR director, someone from the outside, because sometimes I believe that we need to shake up some things in order to promote and be advocates for real change. Not anything that's um, going to um, be offensive, 
but change that continues to promote our community as we move forward that's indicative of all the people that live in our community. So I don't think that this really falls in line with some of the things we've been discussing along the lines of the Unity and Diversity Committee and the City Manager's Diversity Council. Um, I do believe hard work should be rewarded, but at the same time, I'm looking at the savings of $126,000. I believe in being fiscally conservative to some degree. However, you have to weigh your risks versus your benefit. And we invest in the things that we want to see take place. And so tonight, I need to acknowledge publicly so that there are no questions and no stones unturned that I will be voting against this because I expected something larger. I expected something that would do a better job to level the playing field. Thank you. Okay. I just want to, um, you know, comment about, you know, the diversity and um, in, in, in that particular conversation. And, you know, uh, it, it, it should come down to, um, you know, uh, people's abilities and, and the fact that they've been trained in, in the type of job they do. And, and to me, that should always weigh out um, when, when you're evaluating and assessing talent and, and employees is, is not, you know, it's, it's nothing more than their performance and, and we should, be, you know, close our eyes to anything else. It's what are they capable of? What's their performance tell me? What's, you know, I have, I have data and records of their, of their success and, and my eyes close and I think about who makes this a better organization and, and nothing more and nothing else. So, Mr. Frost. I too want to congratulate you three. Uh, I'm, I'm ending up my nine years, and uh, down through those nine years, y'all helped me greatly. I've appreciated it very much. You've done a great job, and I congratulate you on your promotion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I had wrote up a little something that I was going to read, Mr. Mayor, that I wrote up. Uh, Mr. Finley, I got two minutes, right? <laughs> you, said, oh, okay. you said you wanted one minute. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, but I want to go ahead and I kind of did this uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, over the past week, you have undoubtedly read about transition and changes in the city of Longview. While change is often unsettling, I want to reassure the community that we are continuing to move forward in a positive fashion with a goal of providing excellent service in a manner that is respected of the city, because Longview is one of the best cities in this area. Over the past two years, we have enjoyed many successes in the area of economic development with new companies coming to Longview and existing companies expanding. We have added quality of life projects such as walking and mountain bike trips and a dog park. This council has approved additional faculties including a fire training center and many assisted living centers. We have maintained a balanced budget, obtained a AA bond rating, and just recently received a ISO insurance rating. This will in turn assist reducing insurance rates for residents and businesses. These successes were the result of hard work from everyone in the city manager's office on down. We on the council set the policy and the strategic goals. Our staff provides the implement implementation to accomplish these goals. This reorganization is just the first step with additional steps to follow building a foundation for growth. I trust the decision we make tonight is in the best interest of the residents of the city of Longview. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good job, Gary. Good job. Any other questions? If not, may I have a motion? Move to approve. Have a motion. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay, congratulations to you guys. Okay, we have, uh, and congratulations to you, Mr. Willard. Thank you, sir. Um, election item, consider an ordinance canceling the general election. That's music to a candidate's ears. <laughs> Hamasi <laughs> Shahara. <laughs> uh, but consider an ordinance canceling the general election to fill the expired uh, term for City Council District 4. Ms. Shelley. Good evening. Hello there. 
Um, we're requesting an ordinance canceling the election to fill the expired term for council member district four and declaring elected to office the unopposed candidate Kristen Ishihara for a term expiring in May of 2017. Mrs. Ishihara will be sworn into um, sworn in after presenting the canvas of the district three council member election on May 15th, 2014 at a special election. Okay, questions? Special I'm called sure session, know. excuse me. No. <laughs> you scared them all off. Yeah. Okay, do, do, so we don't have to actually, we do have to have, a, okay, so may I have a, a motion? So we moved. Have a motion, a second, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. That's all of our business tonight, counts, but we do have citizen, oh, excuse me, items of community interest. Oh. I'd like to start out by asking, uh, Christian to uh, stand up, stand up and let all the citizens see her. All right. Uh, I only have one more year left to work with her and I know it's going to be a great time because uh, she's is, uh, uh, she's behind the uh, animal shelter as much as I am. So. Uh, I've got another vote on the council now. <laughs> Man, you adding it up, weren't you, buddy? Yep. <laughs> Gary? Uh, first, I want to say congratulations to Johnny Cases on their 65th anniversary. You, you didn't have that one, did you, Miss Blair? I, I would say. Oh, okay. Got some of those good oranges. But, hmm. uh, you know, because the average business cycle is probably 40 years, so they really surpassed that mark. So, yeah. congratulations to the folks over at Johnny Cases. Uh, the second thing I got, Mr. Mayor, I got some very exciting happening in the Southwestern District in Longview. And I went over to the textile and I talked to Bill, and I want to see a conceptual view of what the uh, loop to it. Uh, the southwestern loop, I mean, well, the bridge is going to look like going over that railroad track Sabine Street bridge. over Sabine, Sabine Street. And uh, they're going to have a, this, where, this is where your business is, Mr. Allen. Yeah. They're going to have a, you was asking me about, they're going to have a loop around that goes underneath that bridge and goes back to the south side of the area. But it's, very, it's a very good design. And the completion day is going to be in uh, 2016. Really? 2016, but it's a good design, and uh, instead of, uh, you going to have to go over the bridge now, so it's going to be real, right nice. I'm going to be at the Boys and Girls Club on March 19th, and I'm going to be talking about how city government works, and I'm going to have somebody from the fire department to talk about the fire explorer program. Good. Good deal. Thank Great. you, Ms. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Cashin? I actually don't know that I have any today, believe it or not. Um, we just got back. I would like to say we just got back from a great uh, Texas Eagle Marketing and Performance Organization meeting in San Antonio, Texas. I gave a presentation on behalf of the city of Longview. For those of you who don't know, that is Texas Eagle, our rail. want to encourage everyone to go ahead and mark your calendars. And yes, it is election day, but it's May the 10th. Uh, we have told them on behalf of the mayor and council that we are going to roll out the red carpet for the members of Tempo and all of their efforts for many, many years. So I want to encourage people to please come and participate in that. And I think that's all I have tonight. Well, thank you, ma'am. And, and, and thank you for uh, the good job you've been doing with, um, you know, the whole rail program and with Tempo. And uh, I think it's going to be really Do neat what? to have them here uh, on the 10th. All right. Okay, Mr. Frost. Oh, let's see. Uh, this weekend we start the basketball tournament, uh, 14 and under in several groups, 150 different teams and things. They're going to start uh, having an opening tomorrow night, so they'll be here playing over the weekend. Okay. Did you want to mention it? Because I was going to mention it. The mayor mentioned it. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the Community Health Corps, well, let me, I want to do something first before, I have two things I want to say. I want to speak in support of the intent behind uh, Councilwoman Williams' negative vote tonight. Um, we need more black faces, we need more minorities, we need more women within our organization. And I want to encourage everyone who might hear, see this meeting or see the, um, the recording of this meeting or read about it if the paper repeats it, 
that, uh, as Ms. Willis once said, the city of Longview is open for business, and we welcome anyone here and want to encourage anyone who might have an interest to become a Keith Bonds or to become a Martell Armstrong or a Laura Hill to, to apply to become part of our team because our Longview City staff is really a great place to work. And I look forward to the day we don't have to worry about whether or not we have a problem that, as, as she expressed it tonight, and that I agree with, because we do have the kind of folks that um, want to work here and come from all walks of life. So I want to encourage anyone to do that. Secondly, I started volunteering about a year ago for um, within the Community Health Corps organization, which most folks go, who's that? You tell them it's the old, old Sabine Valley, and people go, oh yeah, that's right. So, but Community Health Corps is so much more than just alcohol and drug rehab. And one of my passions is homeless vets. I'm a Marine, and they have a wonderful program and uh, are working hard to help homeless vets in East Texas. To that end, they're having a fundraising dinner on Saturday night. Um, they've sold about 180 tickets. They have room for about another 20 or 25 people. I'd like to encourage you to come out and, um, and attend it. It begins at 6 o'clock. There's a dinner at 6. Um, there's some performances. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed this for the folks who are actually in the program. They all think they're M&M, &M, you know, and they, they like to come out and sing. And, uh, but they have a lot of uh, excitement in the way they uh, perform. And then most importantly to me is there's a Marine Lieutenant Colonel retired that's going to be speaking who served in Iraq and has a special passion also for veterans returning back home and dealing with post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome and um, how because of the, so many of our veterans have ended up as homeless uh, in our community. So. Um, it's a great story that he has. He travels all over the country speaking on behalf of veterans. And again, Community Health Corps is a great asset to our city. And I'd like to encourage people to come out and support that and buy a ticket and come join us on Saturday night. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Allen? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. I would just like to encourage everybody at this time, go outside, take advantage of our wonderful Longview parks and walking trails. Ms. Hill sitting over there with a big smile has done an excellent job. We really have a wonderful place to live. Don't stay in the house, go outside and enjoy East Texas. Thank you. Okay, Longview Parks and Recreation will host 150 youth basketball teams from across Texas during the TAAF Youth Basketball State Tournament. Teams will complete uh, will compete at basketball gyms throughout Longview community on Friday, March 14th and Saturday, March 15th. We want to thank LISD, Pine Tree School District, Laterno University, St. Mary's Catholic Church, Longview Christian School, and The Rock at First Baptist Church. Uh, congratulations to Keep Longview Beautiful, Ms. Drogi. Uh, they received Keep America Beautiful President's Circle Award during Keep America Beautiful's 2014 National Conference which recently took place in Charlotte, North Carolina. The President Circles Award recognizes exemplary performance made by certified affiliates of the national nonprofit in building and sustaining a vibrant community. Longview Transit is celebrating 11 years of transportation service to the community. Talked about Miss Willis earlier, and that was her baby, so to speak. To celebrate Longview Transit is partnering with Leadership Longview to conduct a book drive benefiting the Boys and Girls Club of Gregg County. On Monday, March 17th, Longview Transit riders who present a new or gently used children's or young adult book will be allowed to ride free. For more information, call 903-753-2287. And finally, getting ahead in, in a just getting by world getting ahead in a just getting by world. Class will begin Tuesday, March 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. The 18-week 18 18 class will be offered through Partners in Prevention. Classes offer insight on creating financial goals, budgeting, untapped resources, and the hidden rules of the lower, middle, and upper classes. The class will meet on Tuesdays with child care, meal, and workbook provided. There's no fees for the class. Uh, please call 903-237-1019 uh, for additional information. At yes, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Longview train station, there will be, I think it's a ribbon cutting, is that correct? Banner. A banner. The, the banner when the train goes through at 8.30. It's the Texas Eagle. Thank you, Richard. 8.30. Oh. When the train gets there. 
Uh, so it could be 815, it could be 1015. Okay. All righty. Council meeting is adjourned.